Welcome to John Author's Note. Today we're going to be talking about African currencies and the risks of depreciation at a time of unprecedented investor interest in the African growth story. With me is Razia Khan, Regional Head of Research at Standard Chartered Bank. Razia, um, there's obviously very country-specific reasons for currencies coming under pressure, but is there a broad trend at the moment across many African economies that is putting pressure on African currencies? Well, one concern, especially in the case of the frontier markets in Africa, is that even with new resource discoveries, which typically leads investor interest, we've seen significant trade deterioration. So you have a lot of capital goods imports, you have a ballooning of the import bill, and in the short term, you don't necessarily see that much of a difference with export growth. That does pose risks in terms of where currencies go if it's not offset by greater offshore investor demand for those currencies, perhaps for reasons related to their yield. Uh, one currency that investors obviously watch very closely in Africa is the RAND, which has over the last 12 months uh, performed rather poorly. What's behind that? Well, it's been a set of mixed circumstances for the RAND. Typically, the RAND is seen as a bellwether of global risk appetite. If investors feel good about global prospects, if they're buying risk assets, the RAND will tend to strengthen. And where they feel more negative about things, the RAND tends to come under pressure. What we've seen since the start of the year has been much more South Africa's specific factors impacting on the currency. It's only very recently in the wake of the Bank of Japan decision that we've seen a strong rally across Cross risk assets, with the RAND being the beneficiary. This poses quite a problem for policymakers in South Africa, doesn't it? Because on the one hand, a weaker RAND would uh, make exports more competitive. On the other, it's very reliant on portfolio inflows to uh, plug its current account deficit. And therefore, it needs investor, uh, all those inflows uh, uh, to prop up uh, partly the value of the RAND. It's a very tough balancing act for the authorities in South Africa. To be able to really boost competitiveness of the real economy, they would need to put in place much more in the way of structural reforms. You'd need this to be a much longer term process, and that's very difficult to do, of course. So in the short term, there is this greater dependency on currency weakness as a means of getting that competitiveness, perhaps in a somewhat artificial way. But of course, that also poses problems of its own. It leads to inflation, it can lead to investor disquiet, and then you've got to think about the broader issues, such as the financing of the current account deficit. What other African currencies are on the risk radar at the moment? In the case of Ghana, for example, this is a classic example of a country that has undergone some structural transformation. It's emerged as a new oil producer. Investors are generally enthused about the growth story, but most of all, it's the very high real yield that has attracted investors. Currently, three-year yields in the region of 17%. We're continuing to see that strong offshore demand for Ghanaian bonds despite the fundamentals. Uh, but, but if you look at the, uh, this chart, you see there's been some pretty dramatic depreciation of the, the CD, particularly in 2011-2012. How close to the pain threshold where uh, equity returns are, are negative did, did Ghana come? Well, at the time, of course, there was great concern that even when investors were looking for an exit, it wasn't necessarily always going to be available. And this was reflected in terms of the demand, the new demand for Ghanaian assets that we saw at the time. Of course, that has since been replaced by tightening, significant tightening by the authorities and the pledge to do even more to stabilize the FX market. For the moment, investors seem relatively comfortable that the stability, there may be a bit of depreciation, but it's not going to fundamentally alter the returns that they're looking at. Thank you very much indeed, Razia. And African currencies and the risk of depreciation clearly going to be a big story going forward for African investors.